If p equals k of m equals log base 3 of the quantity m plus 2, find m equals k inverse of p. I'm going to start with my log equation, p equals log base 3 of the quantity m plus 2. I need to solve this equation for m. I have a base 3 logarithm, so my exponential is going to be base 3 as well. The logarithm is equal to the exponent, so my exponent is p. 3 to the p equals m plus 2. To solve this equation for m now, all I need to do is subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. So 3 to the p minus 2 equals m. So we have m equals k inverse of p, which is 3 to the p minus 2. Now I can use a graphing calculator to verify that these are actually inverses of one another. Let's pull up our graphing calculator. I'm going to delete what I have in here and put in my new log function. So in y1 I'm going to put my log function in terms of x. So I'm thinking about log base 3 of the quantity x plus 2. To change that to a natural logarithm using the change of base formula, I would have natural log of x plus 2 all over natural log of 3. So natural log of the quantity x plus 2 divided by natural log of 3. I'm going to put my exponential function in for y2. So in this case, that would be 3 to the x minus 2. And then y3 equals x, because inverse functions are reflections about the line y equals x. So let's graph these three. So I see some intersections through here. It's a little bit hard to see which is which, unless I go into my trace menu. The first thing that I graphed was the log function. So right now we're on the log function. And if I trace along here, I see in the first quadrant, the log function ends up underneath the linear function. So our exponential function's up here in the first quadrant anyways, above the linear function. It does dip below the exponential function through here, whereas the log function is up above just through this little region through here. Let's look at some values. Now I need to be a little bit tricky here because I want my input, the entire thing in parentheses, I'm taking my input and adding two. I want that to be a power of three. So for instance, if I put in 7, 7 plus 2 is 9, that's a power of 3. So on our log function, which was under y1, we're on the first graph, let's put in an input of 7. The y-coordinate is 2. Well, that makes sense. Input 7, 7 plus 2 again is 9. 3 raised to what power is 9? 3 squared is 9. So it makes sense for our output to be 2. Now on the graph of the exponential, I should have the point 2, 7. Let's see if that's true. The exponential is under y2, so I'm looking for this number in the upper right-hand corner to change to 2. So let's press our up arrow. There's the linear function that was under y3 and the exponential function. Let's put in an x-coordinate of 2. And as we expected, the y-coordinate is 7. Well, let's look at our formula here. Input 2, 3 squared is 9. We subtract 2 and get 7. That makes sense. Let's try another x value on our log function. I'm going to put in negative 1 for x. My y coordinate is 0. Let's see if this makes sense. Input negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 
3 raised to what power is 1? Well, 3 to the 0 is 1, so this makes sense. If the point negative 1, 0 is on the log function, then the point 0, negative 1 should be on the exponential function. Let's move up to graph 2, which was the exponential function, and put in 0 for x. The y-coordinate is indeed negative 1, as it should be. Let's test with our formula. Input 0, 3 to the 0 is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. That makes sense.